So let's take a look at this 309 in extreme detail. We're going to rip it to pieces. We're going to see exactly how it's built, see what Logitech's done to improve this and really whether it's a good mouse or not. So if you want to get a competitive edge over your rivals and see if you want to use this, well, stick around and we'll see exactly how this is going to benefit you or probably not. So I'm Billy Bob, gaming 35 years, well into gaming mice, go over 250 I think at the minute, something ridiculous. Um, I also game on Valorant, I also mod mice as well on stream, so if you're into that kind of stuff, then stick around. So let's take a look at this 309 in more detail. Right, so let's take apart the 309 and see what Logitech's done with it. It's a bit of a weird thing, but let's see how it's constructed at least, see if we can get some inspiration. See the least a decent job. It does feel absolutely rock hard, by the way. So you're worried about quality. This thing is good. Don't worry about it. it it's built well. This thing is this thing is a tank. Let's weigh all the bits, take it apart, see how well they've built it. Let's see what it's about. 63 grams. You could do that if you use a power play puck. Let's put a bit more a bit more in there because power play puck, how much it weighs, but that's what you're looking at. But generally that's what you're gonna be running at. 85, you might be able to get a slightly lighter battery in it. Maybe 78 grams or something, it's a little bit heavy. Kind of like the grey white combo, like the translucent shell. These are the 80 vibes. Thinnest skates, I see uh, Logitech's not learning, it's still using a two piece skate, which means it's gonna split. Pretty standard thickness. There's a bit of a pet hate. I thought they don't put a little notch in, but they have here to help you get the scale. out. I actually don't use them, but they can help you. Give Logitech, the, the skates do peel well, Logitech, as long as you don't split it at the start, which nine out of 10 times you do. It was weird how Logitech used a horseshoe um, sensor cover. Generally you don't need them as long as you don't put too much pressure on them. You haven't got a really soft pad. Nothing revolutionary there. I mean, why not put six screws on it just to make it even heavier for us? I feel like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm guessing this is holding down the shell, but why so heavy? Logitech's goal on this mouse was not to make it light, that's for sure. I don't know what Logitech's thinking with this mouse, I don't get it. I think sometimes Logitech and Razor just think weirdly. Oh my days is level, please. Screw, let's use a normal screwdriver. Is that? It's the normal Logi screw. It registered. Interesting inside. I thought it'd be a bit heavier, but where's all the weight, man? Oh my days, the size of that resistor. What the hell? Look at it. What has Logitech done? What? Yeah, I think it converts the power play somehow from a AAA or something, or AA. It's got to, it must be knocking the power down or something. It's a three volt F1, I don't know what that is. How bizarre. It's probably a way of like hybrid in it, so you get the power play, which we've not seen with a AA battery, which is a bit different. This is new, but maybe it holds, the, maybe that's holding the power, do you think, for the power play? Maybe, equivalent, maybe that's the battery equivalent, I don't know. Let's take the power play out of this thing. The magnets can mess the scales up. Four screws, one, two, three, four. Quite a small PCB. It's using all the standard Logitech screws out. They haven't changed them. Yeah, 
Happy Bite Logic. Oh no. Time to bust it, rivet. Don't do it, Logitech. Don't do it. I do like this transparent stuff. It's only a different scroll wheel. I mean, they've not even tried to <laughs> save any weight out of that. It could at least give us an infinity scroll, man. What is this mouse? The only thing I'm liking on this mouse is the shape and this little rubber on the scroll wheel. That's it. That's all I like. Using a Kelly 10, interesting. Blue turquoise, I've not seen that one. PCB with this massive resistor in for the power, power play, I guess. Now let's bring out the magic eye. Let's see what they're using. Can't see any MC oh, there isn't it? on the bottom, hiding it from me. Well, good news, they're using the N52820, so they're not using the cheap Compia X1. Bonus. I can read this even without glasses, but they're using the Hero Rev, Hero HD1 Rev 009. I don't know if that's the same one as the Super Lion thing. Probably is. Here we go, we've got the power button, which I'm kind of missing the blue and red to kind of not put the sticker on it, so you don't know if it's on or off. Must have written on the base this time though. Let them off. I reckon 12 grams. It's nine. See, it weighs the same. That base is the same weight as um, the Death Adder Hyperspeed V3. Maybe a little bit smaller, I don't know, but interesting. I thought it'd be lighter. It'd be heavier because it's got all the holes drawn out on the Death Adder, but see? Razor's base isn't that light. Ugh. What a weird inside. Looks a mess, gotta be honest. There's no piece of art this inside. I'll just accidentally try to take some weight out of this. Don't know. Oh, it's actually got full size switches. Why are they so springy? There's a screw for the back button as well. There's one there, one in. Okay, hang on, there's two. So you've got one here, one here, and there's also one right under here. On the screws. It's definitely Optomax. You can tell by the four pins here for the main switch. It feels a bit of a weird construction because these don't feel like they're attached to the sh this shell, but they are. It's like this is like the inner bit that's going to ping out, but this part's still part of the main shell. If that makes sense. Took all the screws out. It gives me 305 vibes updated this bounce, but I don't see what's holding this together. Behind number spring is a screw, you see it? That's the one holding it together. Fuck you, Logitech. Yes. That'd be right, it feels horrible, the um, DPI button. These are the worst switches ever. Raise, Logitech's not changed its side button design, which is probably why, but these switches are using here. I've got to see what these are, because these are, these are horrible. Or in this combination, because switches can feel different depending on the combo of uh, mouse, like the mouse combo, button combo, what I'm trying to say. Oh my god, I knew it. I should have known it. I should have called it already. They're using Japanese, uh, Chinese armor on 20 mils. Of course they are. They feel really bad in that combination. They don't normally feel that bad, to be fair, but they feel bad in that side button combination that they've built. Of course, let's put three screws in here as well, just to just to make it even better. Why not? Just to add a bit of extra weight. We'll kind of make it lightweight, but we won't bother. We'll just add as many screws as we can. Yeah, it was, it was not a flappy one. It was just a pull. But yeah, 20 million on runs. Come on. Really? Still the same. Getting a grey wire. Final mouse should take some uh, notice of this, how they've changed the colours to blend them slightly better. And look at this beast. You see, they try to take some weight out of it. Six grams. That's quite a bit. And even Logitech's not even changed their main button design, I guess. 
kind of got the crisscross. Basically, it's super light, which is why it's extremely mushy. They even thinned it out quite a bit, which explains. I mean, definitely got a lot of screws. 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30 screws so far. <laughs> the hat for the most screws goes to Logitech, even called that grey. Some credit for that. Four screws for this micro PCB across the front. Normally they put the smaller screws in here, but they're, you know, they're like the slightly shorter thread, but they haven't put the longer ones in. So at least they've changed that. So there's not three sets of screws now, there's only two versions of screws, so save themselves some ruler. The world's thinnest PCB. No surprise using the orange Omron ones, which they seem to be putting in all their Logi mice at the minute. Now we've got the final bit, the shell. Took a bit longer to take apart than I thought. Look at it, how much more complicated that is. To be what's been built. This is the 309 from Logitech, mate. It is horrific. Just uh, don't bother. Save your money, mate. Don't don't waste your money on it. My one consensus for this is don't waste your money. I don't understand what they're trying to do with it. It's like confused between a lightweight mouse and a not lightweight mouse and trying to work with power play with this resistor and mushy side buttons and I don't know. I don't like it. Is it built well? 100% this thing is a tank. 100% tank, but I wouldn't spend my money on this. Nice shape, the shape's nice. Mushy main buttons. The switches are nice, but way much too much pre-travel. Side buttons are horrendous. Coating's okay. It's a weird, weird mouse for 24, agreed. 